So when I say raptor, birds of prey, most people start thinking about eagles and condors. When you want to get the attention of elementary students, this is an American kestrel. She's a small falcon, just like you guys, you're small falcons. You bring out the birds. She's a little nervous when she first comes out, so she might flap and make a commotion. Charles is with the San Diego County Parks and Recreation Department. He and his wing friends are part of the Discovery Program, visiting the Far Elementary Falcons. That pointy wing makes falcons really agile and maneuverable in the air. We're doing a program where we bring animal activities and adventures to school sites. If we had eyes as good as an American kestrel, not only could we read that bottom line, which I can't even read from here, but we could read print that would be half that size. His love for raptors came at an early age. This is a red-tailed hawk. She gets that name from this beautiful brick red tail right there. I had a, a friend whose father was a falconer, so I got to watch them train different birds of prey for the practice of falconry. And then later on after high school, I started to work in the zoological industry. And then uh, fast forward a few years after that, I'm now a county park ranger, and I got to bring my experience handling these beautiful birds to the county parks and rec program. I have a hawk that weighs three pounds and her wingspan is three feet. Let's pretend that he weighed 50 pounds. How big do you think his wings would need to be? The birds we shared with Far Elementary School today are both rescue birds. And that makes it hard for these birds to thrive in the wild. They weren't raised by their parents in the wild, so they don't know how to hunt. For a 50 pound person to fly, their wingspan would need to be 50 feet. Some of these animals, when they're injured, can be dangerous. They can, they can hurt us and, and cause injury. Uh, and sometimes our intervention, when we don't know what we're doing, can cause them to hurt themselves further. So the best thing to do is call Animal Control or the Humane Society, an organization like Project Wildlife, and, and consult with them to see how you can best help the animal. These talons, we call them, special word for toenails, are really sharp and these feet that the talons are hooked up to are really strong. A lot of kids, if you pulled them before our programs and asked them what kind of animals we have out here, they might say something as bizarre as lions and tigers and bears when asked what wild animals are here. And they don't realize that we have these awesome winged predators that share their neighborhoods. You can probably see a couple of these guys on a typical commute from home to school. So bringing them eye to eye with birds that they share their habitat with is really awesome, very rewarding. And the Discovery Program fits in nicely with class curriculum. She's squeezing my hand and exerting 40 foot-pounds of pressure. This bird can exert 200 foot-pounds of pressure. Teachers might have a hard time justifying the time to tear away from the curriculum, but what we've done is we've adapted next generation science standards so that we can have a cause and we can be in alignment with what their learning mission is by adapting to that curriculum. It was amazing. It's really exciting to see all the birds, how they acted. So birds of prey grip and rip. They use that hook-shaped beak to rip their food and make big things into small things that they can swallow. Sharing these live birds of prey with students is always fun. It brings out such an exciting element and it's really great to be able to connect the kids with animals in their community. We're gonna leave it there because I know that you have other things to do and she has to get back home so she can eat.